Good day chaps. So today's quick video we're going to look at one of five vehicles mentioned in the future tank program that began while the MBT-80 program was drawing to a close to find a suitable replacement for the Chieftain tank. The source material from this video comes from a high level but declassified document written for the Secretary for Defence, Michael Heseltine, dated 11th of July 1984 and I'll attach this document in the links below. In this letter, it recalls that the Chieftain PIP, or Product Improvement Program, was initiated in late 1981 under the Chief Scientific Advisor for the Ministry of Defence, Sir Ronald Mason, who formed a high-level group containing the Vice Chief of General Staff, Assistant Chief Scientific Advisor, the Master General of Ordnance, the Deputy Under Secretary of State, and the Director General Fighting Vehicles Establishment to consider the replacement for the Chieftain tank in the mid-90s, as the situation was rapidly getting out of hand. The Chieftain's replacement by this time was long overdue. Analysis had shown that with the latest upgrade she was able to withstand hits in the older T-62s, but that the Soviet T-72 was easily able to perforate it at long range. And although various armour refits had been considered, none were implemented at this time. The first real replacement was to have been the future main battle tank program, started in 1970. This was a joint project between the UK and Germany that fell apart, partially from British belligerence, partly due to both nations having their own preconceived ideas as to what a tank should do and what parts it would require. And from the future main battle tank program, however, one vehicle, designated A1, itself a follow-on from the FV4211, would go on to influence aspects of the next project, Main Battle Tank 80. MBT 80, a subject far too complex for just one video, began in 1977-78, was the next attempt to give the British a suitable main battle tank. This became a binary project, with the MBT 80 intended to be built for the UK, and was arguably the most powerful tank in the world at the time, while at the same time a separate project for the Shur of Iran would be in place for a new main battle tank. These projects would run in a collaborative manner, with both projects using the same hull in places to save time and resources. Yet this too would ultimately fail. Infighting, delays and political interference saw the MBT-80 potential stopped, with some predictions into the 90s which led to its termination. Meanwhile the Shur program also hit a small hiccup as he and his family were hoofed out in a revolution and Iran went all a bit weirdy beardy. The UK did however have a large lump sum paid up front and decided to keep this wedge of cash. Meanwhile the proposed export for the Schur tank was called Challenger. Facing the fact that the Chieftain might end up serving until the 90s by which time it would be hopelessly obsolete, the UK chose to use the Challenger and some British politicians have been arguing from the outset that we should have just used this from the get-go. And so fast forward to 1981, and Mason's group was formed. This program wanted a new tank ready for the 90s. This would involve the UK defence industry, private firms, Radi and MV, to meet an outline staff target, or OST, initially to draw up concepts and ideas, and, pending further assessment, to move on to a series of demonstrators for evaluation. The project was headed up by the Director General Fighting Vehicles Establishment, who narrowed the proposals down to four main aspects, and these were initially to fall into the following base categories. 1. Tanks with external 120mm guns on unmanned turrets with an autoloader and a crew in the hull. 2. Turreted tanks with a 120mm gun, a crew of three and autoloaders, including Challenger Pip. 3. Light tanks with external 105mm guns and guided weapons with a crew of two. And four, the Chieftain Pip, a Chieftain hull with a Challenger turret. All four of these ideas were clearly listed in the 1981 document. The Director General then split this into two sections. The external guns and lights would have their designs submitted by four firms, Vickers, Alvis, Royal Ordnance and GKN although the latter would drop out early on. These vehicles would retain just the name Future Tank Programme. Each firm was given £100,000 roughly, 
although no guarantee of production was included in their contracts, and a total of 7.8 million was allocated, with 5.9 million set aside for any working demonstrator. These vehicles got as far as detailed drawings on wooden models, which were made in 1983, although none would go into service. Also on this list was the Chieftain and Challenger PIP, which was split away from the above programme and would now just be known as the PIP programme and would be allocated the remaining £1.9 million. This would be handled by MV and the Challenger team and not the previous contractors. Challenger PIP would result in plans and drawings drawn up as well as a wooden model made in 1987. Along the way, one chieftain, this one, serial number 00FD66, a chieftain Mark 53 from 1972, was chosen, and a very early turret from the Sure tank placed on top of it. The turret ring had an adapter fitted as a temporary measure, although any such final project it wouldn't have been so high. Evaluations were undertaken, but it was not deemed suitable. The rest of the particular project, with the Chieftain, falls into obscurity. Challenger Pip would go on further with an almost complete redesign of the vehicle, and that's a video for a different day. As to why this particular one failed, there's no notes on it. The most likely scenario is that the turret, while an improvement, the hull is still a Chieftain with the usual faults, and that by simply improving those aspects with, say, a new engine, suspension and so on, you end up back with a Challenger. Well guys, I hope you liked this quick video. If you did, please do give us a like, a share, or a sub, and until next time, toodle pip.